a touch weight management channel. This is Yuji Nakamura. This video is the first uh, video uh, of practical series of touch weight management. Um, I'm following my own uh, checklist to get uh, or to collect uh, all data from the action. And then we will analyze from that data and then uh, decide where are we going to. So um, we need to take uh, many uh, bits and pieces from the action, hammer, weapon, and key. So we shall start to do that. The checklist we use is uh, downloadable from my website. Uh, it should be uh, in the box below or on the screen. So visit uh, to that uh, website and then uh, use it freely. This is page one of the checklist. You should have been discussed with the customer uh, who wants to, whether they want to get a heavier touch or lighter touch, or even uh, having keeping same touch or similar touch with existing condition. So uh, writing down the situation or expectation here and how much. And also the point is the cost, uh, whether using new parts or using all existing parts or using a touch weight device such as touch rail. So write down those details at the bottom here. First part of page two, general points. Uh, first, observe a problem. You just look around the action and then check uh, whether uh, the funny points are, exist, like such as um, too much, too many keylets there, or too fat hammers, or so on and so on. And check regulation. If regulation was too bad, you need to regulate at least sample mode. To take measurement and match lines and uh, shank center height. If you change weapons or a bore uh, hammerhead by yourself, check this stuff. In this project, I'm using I'm uh, doing Yamaha C7 without uh, changing weapons, so I didn't check them. So we are going to measure string height. The string height is measured for setting up a regulation gate for pulley regulation. I'm using a square gauge and a ruler. A square gauge is uh, standing on the key bit and ruler is touching to the other side of the string. This photo shows uh, 15 centimeters or 150 millimeters from key bit and 55 millimeters from this other side of the string. So at this point, the string height equals 150 millimeters plus 55 millimeters equals 205 millimeters. This is the string height of this position. This column shows uh, string heights of entire piano. So we are measuring spread distance next. Correct spread distance sets a correct uh, relationship between shank and weapon. I normally preset vernier at specification of the manufacturer. In this case, 112.5 millimeters for Yamaha, and then check a uh, distance between uh, actual center and vernier. Do same at middle range and bottom base. These figures are for this project. Measure static touch weight. Measure down weight and up weight to get balance weight, uh, which is the index of uh, static touch weight. I will show at the other video for the details how to measure down weight and up weight. Just make sure the mass center of the weight should be on 13 mm from the front edge of the key. Do same at this semitone keys. 
This is the result of downweight and upweight measurement for this project Yamaha C7. I quickly calculated balance weight, which shows moderate uh, static weight. Next, we are measuring hammer related items. So, measuring strike weight first. So, first, uh, we've got um, digital scale and um, the pivot jig and uh, the hammer sh flange, shank flange should be uh, upright 90 degrees and then uh, put onto the uh, pivot jig and dig uh, the uh, top of the uh, wedge here it should go to uh, the under the center of center pin and then a uh, shank should be parallel to the ground and then we measure uh, how much uh, the, the weight uh, at this tail, this position. Uh, this strike weight is used for uh, calculating uh, equation of uh, balance uh, by Stout, as well as uh, calculating moment of inertia of the hammer. Uh, These figures were collected from the project C7. And I quickly checked uh, the index number for the hammer weight. Uh, from smart chart to get an idea how heavy this a set of hammers is. Next, we are measuring um, length HSW, um, length of strike weight. Mm, this measuring distance between uh, center of the center pin and uh, the center of this hammer root. So using ruler to match this zero point to the center of the uh, hammer wood and then take measurement at the center pin. Alternatively, uh, you can use a digital vernier uh, to measure this as well. Then get a measurement. It shows uh, the measurement of length of strike weight. And this measurement is used for calculating moment of inertia of the hammer. These are the figures for this project. And we check uh, tightness of uh, flange as well. It just This is for a general friction. So just you can feel uh, the smoothness or smoothness here. At the same time you can probably choose a swinging method to check the tightness of the flange. Next, uh, we are going to measure at length uh, hammer in. Uh, this is used for uh, calculating gear ratio towards to linked uh, moment of inertia. And this is uh, input length of hammer assembly. And so I have already uh, I put dot here. Uh, this is the extension of the center line of this knuckle bed here. So measuring from this dot to center of center pin. And you can use digital vernier to check, to measure this as well. These are the figures. Now we are measuring uh, roller distance and a diameter. Uh, this is for uh, the replacement parts for the new shank. So if you don't use um, new shank, you don't have to measure this. So measuring center line of this bed to center of this center pin. So set uh, the middle center of this plate, then measure at the center of uh, center pin. Same uh, with uh, the vernier. You can set left side like this and then check center of center pin like this. So these are the data from the project. Also uh, measuring roller diameter uh, to, from two directions. One is four back diameter and another direction is top to bottom at the shank uh, diameter.
We are going to measure uh, weapon related items now. First, we are measuring weapon weight. Uh, this is uh, for Stanwood um, equation. And I'm following his way to measure uh, weapon weight. Uh, before I put on this jig, I marked a center of capstan. Uh, you can see the, the mark of uh, capstan here, and then mark uh, the center of this capstan in, at the outside of this lead, uh, cloth. And then uh, you are, we are going to put this mark to this uh, wedge here to measure uh, weapon weight. And then uh, flange should be uh, vertical uh, down and then uh, put onto this uh, pivot jig. Uh, pivot jig, uh, the wedge, top of wedge should be uh, in under the center pin like this and check uh, the position here again. So uh, this uh, measurement is the, the weapon weight. You need to measure only one or two samples. We are going to measure uh, the length weapon in, uh, the length distance uh, from pivot point to uh, input point from the key stick. Uh, we use for this uh, for calculating gear ratio and linked uh, moment of inertia. So this uh, mark is the center of the capstan and we are measuring from this here to center of center pin here. Alternatively using a vernier take a right side uh, to the center of the center pin. So this is the measurement uh, for length we pin in. We are measuring length weapon out, uh, output length of weapon. Uh, this is used for our calculating gear ratio as well as a linked uh, moment of inertia. So we are at the output point is the one millimeter be, uh, forward from this top end corner at a four uh, backside of this corner. Uh, so, uh, but one millimeter here is a bit difficult to measure. So. Uh, and you can just push this uh, repetition lever a little bit, and then set uh, left side zero point to the corner of the jack, and then um, take measurement at the center of this pin. Yeah, alternatively, uh, you can use a vernier, so set left side to the top end, uh, further end of this jack, yeah, and then take measurement at the right side. With. This was the figure of length weapon out. Don't forget to check a weapon flange center at the same time. Next, we are going to measure key related items. First, measure front weight. We need this for calculating equation of balance. Looking down balance hole and Align center of balance hole to the wedge of the pivot jig. Set the key front at the measuring point. My jig achieves it when I'm placing key front one millimeter away from the wall of the jig. Measure key ratio immediately after front weight measurement. Reset digital scale to zero and then put 10 grams of weight to the capstan. Here are the data of the front weight and key ratio of the project. So we are measuring uh, the output length of key stick, uh, length key output. So uh, first, uh, the mark uh, by pencil uh, to the center of the balance pin. Balance pin here. So mark here. And then uh, we are measuring by uh, long ruler, ruler or 
uh, like Bernier set this capstan center here. So uh, we may, I may recommend uh, putting this kind of masking tape to the capstan. Just put this top line at same as capstan top and then mark the center center of the capstan capstan center here so we now clearly see the top center of the capstan screw so 145.9 millimeter so this is the length of key output so these figures are the length of key out from the project. Check balance pushing as well as front pushing for that looseness. Check also balance hole and capstan smoothness to get a friction problem. Take one capstan from the key stick and measure the weight. This is for calculating a moment of inertia of the key stick. This is the template for sample keys of the project. I will show you how to make this template as well as um, calculating moment of inertia of the key stick at the other videos. Last item of this checklist is plotting original strike weight to smart chart. I will explain at the other video. So we collected all data which we need uh, to um, analyze and process. So uh, I will upload uh, those detailed videos um, very soon and uh, looking forward to showing you